Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, we're gonna go over a bunch of new, I'll say news, or things I wanna cover in this presentation. It covers a wide array of things. Uh, and it's news supporting the thesis, supporting our investments, supporting my paradigm and outlook and view on the commodity super cycle that could potentially be coming, or is coming, or what we are in already. So I'm going to go over a couple of things, give my opinion, and and try to make comments on it. So I'll start with uh, we're going to start with the concentration of traders in the CFTC COTs. These are the largest traders short versus days of production. Where you have the largest opportunity is where everyone is shorting it. And if you notice on the right hand side here, the eight and four largest traders. They're all shorting silver and platinum. That, in my opinion, are is probably where the greatest opportunities are. Because when when this all unwinds, they're going to have to become buyers. So when you close a short position, you have to buy it to cover it. And with all these leasings that they're doing with the metals, it's stating that they have to buy it back and 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 replace those leases that they're doing. So silver and platinum are the largest shorted metals or largest shorted commodities in general uh, on the market. So I think with where the ratios are, platinum and silver are of the best value as well. So I think you could have some massive short squeezes in platinum and silver. And I, I wanted to touch on how much platinum is in the world. It's estimated about 8 million ounces of 0.999 fine platinum bullion exist in the world. That is ridiculously low. And if you were to create a cube of it, the 8 million ounces in a cube would be the size of 7.43 feet per side. It's hardly anything. And looking at silver, according to their data, there is now over 2.78 billion ounces of 0.999 fine silver bullion currently being held against silver vaults, silver ETFs or ETPs, government silver hoards, or industrial silver stockpiles. So that's what silver has for inventory. Moving on to some, some news articles, it says, interesting to watch this trend as a lot of projections rode on EVs achieving price parity with ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles. Higher raw material costs could push the average price of a lithium ion battery pack to $135 per kilowatt hour in 2022, a 2.3% gain from this year's level. And we already had a large gain in that level. Rising battery costs hit car makers, threatening climate change push. And that's going to be the same for renewables. As commodity prices go up, their costs are going to go up dramatically. Carbon taxes and levies are easy to implement when energy is cheap. The energy bill for a typical household is set to jump 50% in April to $2,000 or 2,000 pounds. Other options considered at the meeting included eliminating green levies, cutting taxes on bills, and extending financial help. And that's natural gas and electricity and all these things rocketing higher. Goldman Sachs says it's a commodity super cycle could last a decade. They just came out with that. Uh, they were always in the commodity super cycle camp, as myself. Uh, Goldman Sachs it says oil prices could reach $95 if Iran doesn't return to the market this year. Commodities overall are set for a super cycle that could potentially last a decade. It says the best place to be right now, particularly given the Fed pivot, are commodities. We think you're going to see another year of outperformance of commodities and real assets more broadly. Goldman Sachs basically reiterates its core thesis from October 2020. Specifically referring to oil, Goldman Head of Commodities is also very bullish due to low investment in the sector. <coughs> and the fact that only two oil producers in the world, Saudi Arabia 
and UAE currently have the capacity and the means to pump more oil than they did in January 2020. Everyone else is struggling. This market has the potential to get very tight over the next course of next three to six months. Goldsman call for Brent crude prices for the first quarter is 85 per barrel, assuming that Iran could legitimately return to the market later this year. But an Iranian return now looks increasingly unlikely. And without Iranian exports, we could be looking at 95 oil, according to Curry. Last month, Goldman Sachs forecast crude prices could hit $100 in 2023 as demand growth outpaces supply growth. I've got the uranium supply demand at market balance to 2035 from Red Cloud on the right hand side here. And <clears throat> we are entering the deficit period of growing market deficits in uranium. Now, keep in mind, we've got Kazakhstan where it could blow these deficits to the downside with any sort of problem in Kazakhstan with Kazatomprom. So we are already projecting deficits. Now they're just going to get much larger. But this is what it looks like, and this is exactly perfect time to be investing in uranium with the market balance going into deficits like this. The last bull market had deficits that look like this. The next bull market has deficits that look like this. What do you think is going to be the bigger bull market from a fundamental perspective? Moving on to the next stuff. Monthly Dutch TTF natural gas price versus Brent crude oil in USD per BOE. Light blue is crude. Dark is the Dutch natural gas as it blows up. Remember, crude oil is being used to heat things as an alternative to natural gas since it's a cheaper alternative. It is also raising the demand for oil. The natural gas price is being so high in the world. So wherever oil can substitute, they're going to do it. it says here's a here's a relevant thread on embracing oil volatility that addresses this and other important aspects of the oil bull market thesis. On buying the oil dip, while many are calling for the end of the oil and gas bull market or attempting to time the market, we embrace this volatility and continue to buy discounted shares. You average in, buy the dips on a bull market and that's your that's the strategy that most people take they've got cost controls uk industrial gas demand declined 54 percent in the fourth quarter of 2021 and you can see the demand for industrial gas decline as prices go up in 2021 looking at home building says a high on home building. U.S. housing starts reached a nearly 15-year high this year. And you can see the, the housing starts continuing to move on up. Uh, they're actually at 1.7 this last month of the updated, updated movement. North American lumber production is increasing, although lumber prices continue to go higher. So production's going up and the lumber or wood demand is outpacing lumber production. Looking at observable oil inventories, it says on the current trends, the second half of 2022 could see a simultaneous deficit of inventory, spare capacity, and investment. Oh, that is huge. We've got declining inventories here in 2021, all the way down to what would perceive to be some of the lowest levels in a long time. OPEC spare capacity is declining and we are getting to critical levels where oil likes to take off. And our real term CapEx is still continuing to decline to very low levels. I don't see this as being a, a very good scenario for oil prices uh, going down. We've got uh, Kathy Wood, oil price ceiling of 70 bucks, May 11th, 2021. Go Kathy Wood. Way to call it. Uh, another month, another OPEC plus production miss. 
OPEC Plus may struggle to increase production by 400,000 daily barrels. OPEC added only 90,000 barrels in December. The boost from Saudi was offset by losses in Libya and Nigeria. Russia failed to boost output last month. We are ending the production capacity, the spare capacity. It's going away, guys. It's going to get tight. You better be ready. Energy is going to increase quite dramatically if we don't get spare capacity back immediately. This year or next year is going to be some high flying. High flying prices. Casey uh, says PXD's Sheffield reiterates at Goldman Sachs conference concerns of an underinvestment led supply crunch, sees demand exceeding capacity by late 2022, early 2023, with oil in a $75 to $90, $100 range. I hope it stays there. Notes that 110, 120 or higher is not going to help our industry. We've got Bitcoin. Bitcoin is declining. To me, this looks like a bubble. This looks like the top, the ultimate top. Uh, I was expecting the top to be somewhere in this range where the where this finger is, but it, it reached a little bit higher to do a double top, and we're coming back down. Will this turn around? I have no idea, and I wouldn't bet on it. If they were to lock down Tether, I would suspect Bitcoin would be priced in a three-digit price not a five digit. And it could even be lower. Tether, which is the largest, I, I would say, fraud of anything, is going to bring this down if they were to lock down on it. This unregulated market is absolutely ridiculous in how they priced everything. And good luck getting your dollars out of this. Explainer, why a niche fuel market reform triggered major Kazakh protests. So it was from a fuel market from fuel prices. But Kazakhstan, it is going under, we'll call it, protests. And it says, when prices were fully liberalized on Jan 1st, the government expectations were that supplies to the domestic market would rise and help address the chronic shortages. But the measure backfired. As prices nearly doubled overnight to 120, regions such as oil-rich Mangistau where protests started, rely on butane and propane for fueling as many as 90% of the vehicles. Alternative motor fuels such as gasoline and diesel are more costly. Popular anger was already running high because of rising inflation, which was closing in on 9% year on year, the highest in more than five years, leading to the central bank to raise interest rates to 9.75%. The research-rich country of 19 million is estimated to have a million people living below the poverty line while also counting several dollar several dollar billionaires on the Forbes list. The protests have yet to have an impact on Kazakhstan's oil production. President whatever has ordered his acting cabinet to reverse the fuel price rise. What I have in the lower left is the copper inventories are nearing depletion. Global copper cathode visible stocks. Uh, these are the years and 2021, we're way down here in December. The lowest it's been in a very long time. And this right here matches the real estate market, the way that this looks and how inventories are being drawn down year over year. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that we're going to have more inflation. We're going to see higher oil prices, which is going to work its way through everything. Higher natural gas prices, higher everything prices. We're seeing inventories get depleted. We're seeing market balances go negative, which means that inventories are going to continually be depleted. That goes for uranium. It goes for oil. It goes for copper. It goes for all of these energy sectors. It goes for natural gas. We, it goes for coal. Everything is being depleted. We are seeing the rotation happen in front of our eyes of money that's going to shift from bonds and stocks into commodities. Goldman thinks very, I would say, similarly to me. Uh, I don't know what these price projections, where they get them from. But if we go into a negative oil scenario where we have more demand exceeding supply, price is the factor 
that will equal all of it out, and I don't know where it's going to go. Much higher. That's all I know. But I can't. I don't know where they get their projections from. I think we could see much, much higher prices. Bitcoin. Uh, we got the bubble there. Uh, Nasdaq's in a bubble. These things are going to come under pressure when interest rates go up, and interest rates are going up. Lumber and 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 real estate. Lumber remains robust. It's continuing its progress higher. We are continuing to buy or, or continuing to build more new homes. The housing starts are continuing to go up. Permits are up too, which is usually a leading indicator for housing starts. So everything is playing out to the thesis of the channel. Uh, everything looks really good. Uh, we can throw some other Kazakhstan stuff on top of it where. Uh, we could accelerate the market deficits and and bring them in uh, closer. So we might see more deficits earlier. So everything looks really good, guys. I This is the news that I was looking at. Uh, I just kind of threw it all together, and hopefully you guys enjoyed viewing it. Give me a thumbs up for the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.